Acts chapter 13. Now there was an yeah, and there was in the church that was in Antioch, still in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, prophets, as Barnabas and Simeon, that were called Niger, Claudius of Cyrene, and Mania, which had been brought up by Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord. So here are people who have been with Herod, known of Herod. They are in the church in Antioch. They're prophets and they're teachers, prophesying what things will come. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. All right. Time for Barnabas and Saul to start going out. I got something else for them. When they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So then being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, Paul and Barnabas departed unto Cilicia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And we're gonna get some weird names now. And when they had and when they were at Salmonus, they preached the word of God. No bounce houses, no vacation Bible. They preach the word. For them, the word would be the Old Testament still. We're getting about 44 AD. In the synagogues of the Jews, it would be the Old Testament. I wouldn't think you would have some of the extracurricular activities that the churches would have today, back then. Then again, who knows? Of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. That's the the Mark John that we read about in the previous chapter. They took him with them. Um, let's see, R verse twenty-five, verse twelve, Mark, surname uh, John, whose surname is Mark. So there's three of them out on the journey for the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit. And when they had gone through the Isle of Papos, Papos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. I believe that Bar is, I know you much, I forget now. Bar Jesus. He's a sorcerer. Surprised his name is not Harry. When he was, when well, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, Paulus, a prudent man. So this Sergius Paulus had this sorcerer in his company. Friends traveled together. A prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. So Sergius Paulus, whatever his name is, I ought to know his name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, said, Barnabas and Saul, come, I want to hear what you have to say about the Word of God. But, Elamis, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. Oh, well, he's got a couple names. That's right, he don't call himself the Great. Or Elamis, the Christian sorcerer, I'm sorry, which stood, which stood them, with stood them, with stood them, seeking to turn away, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Here's another man, like in the book of Exodus, here are sorcerers and magicians trying to separate their friend, their deputy, their in charge of the nation as Pharaoh, trying to separate him from God. Let's see what Paul will have to do about bounce houses and playing around with the Word of God. Stolly, stop saying that. No, I will not. I will preach the Bible and the Word of God. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, he's going to change his name. He doesn't want to have anything in reference to Saul. And King Saul was a worldly 
minded man who disobeyed God. So I'm going to take Paul. So then Paul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Come join our missionary tour with magic. And said, O fool of all subtility, Genesis 3, and all mischief, thou child of the devil, you are not saved. Acts 40, I mean, John 8, 44. Well, how's that? This sorcerer by Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost said, you're a child of Satan. You're not saved. Remember the other magician that showed up in Peter's life? Simon? Now we're going to see something else here. We need to pick up. Paul it's going to start taking on the characteristics of Peter. And their ministries are going to start parallel with Paul exceeding to the Gentiles. Peter had an opposition from a sorcerer. Paul is having an opposition from a sorcerer. Start watching Paul and Peter. Peter is really the apostle to the Jews, though he used that second key to the Gentiles. Paul is used for the Gentiles. I mean, used for the Jews, but his ministry will go to the Gentiles. Thou enemy of all righteousness. How's that for a sorcerer? And you care to go on your Facebook pages of all your Christian friends? I've done it. And go look at the books that they read and like and find out one of them, uh, Harry's, are part of their books they like. You know how I realize how much Harry passes through the children in the church house? And their parents just fall for it and give them the money to go see Harry's movies and don't know what the Bible says about sorcery? You're going to stand before Jesus Christ one day and give an account for sorcery allowed in your house. Where Paul has said it is just wicked. I'm just reading the Bible. Just trying to make it all clear to you. Pervert the right ways of the Lord. Pervert. You know somebody who's who's involved with sorcery? Walk up to him and say, pervert. Well, that's someone who does sexual... No, that's someone who's involved in, the, in, the, in sorcery and witchcraft according to the Bible. Sorcery and witchcraft, you have the right to say, you're a pervert. Pervert. The, way, the right ways of the Lord. So Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Paul says, this is not the right way. You're lying. There's no life in sorcery. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for, for a seed. Here's a reverse healing. And immediately there fell on him as him a mist and darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand he becomes blind no light for this guy you imagine paul would come into churches today they're involved in this mess and do what's going on here but it's not going to happen because we don't require signs we have the word imagine churches today and families today god has to bring up acts chapter 13 when you're judge at the judgment seat of Christ. When your wood, hay, or stubble goes poof and disappears before your eyes. And it won't be no magic trick. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Paul's sign gets that deputy. He turns to God unlike Pharaoh. Paul, knowing the Old Testament scriptures, knowing the book of Exodus, realized those magicians were causing a problem for Pharaoh. I'm going to get rid of this magician. And the complete opposite happened from Exodus. This guy said, wow, 
I better get right. Amen. Then the deputy, when saw what was done, believed. There's that believe. The preaching of Paul's word. The Lord. Being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. That's what Paul was teaching. Paul was preaching the word. Doctrine means teaching. Now when Paul and his company loose from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pathetia, and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. Now this is going to be a problem. Chapter 15, verse 38. Paul is going to have a gripe with this guy. Now we're not told. There is nothing said why John left. They're going about, this is the first missionary trip of Paul. John, whose surname is Mark, says, you know what? I'm going back to Jerusalem. And the Holy Spirit did not want us to know why. So don't guess. We don't know. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia. And went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So there's synagogues all over Asia. And what's the first thing Paul does? He walks up to the synagogue, opens up the door, goes in and sits down. Paul's called to the Gentiles, but he still has that Jewish ministry. And after the reading of the law and prophets, which they do today, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Oh, that was an invitation for Paul. The guy gets up there and preaches his message, reads out of the old law, and anybody else got anything else to say in this congregation? Oh. Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, I don't know, somehow like, listen up, people, men of Israel. Ye that fear God, give audience. So you got to fear God. If you don't fear God, what are you going to be saved from? And the God of this people of Israel chose our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, Judah, and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. See, Paul knows. Paul knows the Old Testament. And with a high arm brought he them out of it. Paul's got in mind that this event that just happened with the magicians. I guarantee it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. Those was 40 years, you know, they didn't get to go in the land. God suffered. God allowed. Look at, look at the word, manners in the wilderness. You know what those manners were? Griping and complaining. Now, when we tell our children, now, mind your manners, please, thank you, you know, get your hands off the table. But in the Bible, the manners were, they were griping and complaining. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Cana, Cana, which is Cana, he divided their land he divided land yeah, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave notice he keeps saying he 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 God. You know who did that work? We're reading right now in 18, 19, and 20. Who did that work? Joshua. You remember what Stephen said about Joshua and Jesus? They're the same. Well, this brought back old memories of Paul. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years. How long is the book of Judges? About 450 years. Unto Samuel, the first prophet. Prophet. Now we're going to 1 Samuel. We've gone through Exodus. We've gone through the law. We've gone through Numbers. Now we've gone through the book of Judges. Now we're going to 1 Samuel. Look how Paul lays out the Old Testament. Why? He's in an Old Testament synagogue. They just read from the prophets and the law, and Paul said, hey, I'm just going to give you the brief history before I go further. 
After that, he, he desired a king. They wanted a king like the people. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, about the space of 40 years. That was the people's king. And when he had removed him, killed him in battle, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom he had given testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Now Paul is stepping out of his tribe. Paul's of Benjamin. Do you see where Paul's going with this now? He's pointing out David. He's pointing out the seed of Jesse. Judah. He's taking this Old Testament history. And he's going to run it right to Jesus Christ. Of this man's seed, David, has God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. So one of the things that we find... You know, don't we know that the Messiah was supposed to be born in Bethlehem? He was. You just too ignorant to believe it. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism and repentance to all the people of Israel, Paul knew about John the Baptist. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Who think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. Now I got to I got wonder: Did the Holy Spirit invite Paul with that, or did Paul quote from John the Baptist's mouth personally? Remember to be apostle, and Paul says he's an apostle. One of the preppers prerequisites of three things that need to be happened is you have to be been baptism of John's baptism. Paul calls himself an apostle. Nicodemus believed him by night. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day. Remember that's the big controversy they had with Jesus? Kept breaking the Sabbath day? You didn't hear the Sabbath message, did you? They have fulfilled them concerning him. Christ died according to the scripture. He was buried and he rose again according to the scripture. He had a conversation with, with Moses and Elijah, make sure everything fulfilled. And when he realized everything is fulfilled, he, he bowed up the head. He said it's finished and gave up the ghost. Everything Jesus done was fulfilled the law. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. As it is written, Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. But God has raised him from the dead. He was seen many days of them that which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. People that saw the resurrected Jesus Christ went 363, 360 degrees out into the world and proclaimed that message. We've seen him alive. And we declare unto you glad tidings. That's what gospel means. Glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers. God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is written, and as it is also written in the second psalm. Paul's now going to quote from the psalm. 
Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He's not going to rot. He's not going to decompose. He is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. His body is not in the grave. He said on this wise, Scripture, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he says also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Jesus, he's been in there for four days. He stinketh. Not Jesus Christ. He was in and out of that grave before three days and three nights. So him not decomposing is a fulfillment of Scripture. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, look at that. Look at what Paul says about David. He did God's will. Adultery and murder. Yeah, we're all sinners, aren't we? But he fulfilled the will of God in his life. And God forgave him of the adultery and murder. Fell on to sleep. Oh, so a man that's in God, Old Testament, New Testament, it's considered sleeping. David's taking a good old long nap, isn't he? And was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. David rod away. You'll just find his bones and I don't know if hair. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption, Jesus Christ. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. David, no, Jesus Christ. There's only one that can forgive you the sins. John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And by him, the one, the forgiveness of sins that has no corruption. All that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Paul, you just said a mouthful. You're no longer under the law. After the preacher, whatever you call the rabbi, the master read from the law and the prophets, Paul gives a little history insight. And now before the congregation in this synagogue says, it ain't the law no more, boys. It's Jesus Christ. That's a mouthful. The law of Moses, Paul just said, cannot save you. I keep the Ten Commandments. Well, keep them in hell. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, Ye despisers, and wander, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. There's a new thing happening. Beware, because people are going to, they're going to continue to teach the law the way of salvation. It's not it. And when the Jews were going out of synagogue, synagogue service is over. Watch this. The Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next step. The, the Gentile. <laughs> there were Gentiles in that synagogue service. They walk up to Paul and say, that's a great message, Paul. Can you teach that next Sunday or Saturday? Their Sabbath is on a Saturday. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul. That religious proselyte, that was the Ethiopian eunuch. People like him. Their Gentiles turned Jewish to seek God. They followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. You need to be born again. You need to get saved. You need to believe on Jesus. You need to forsake the law and put your sins on Jesus Christ. That's the persuasion.
And the next Sabbath day, so he's had to been there for a full week, came almost the whole city together to hear the word. Of God. Isn't that great? Man, you would knock me over and kill me if you had the whole city of Daytona Beach show up in City Island to come hear me preach the word of God. And yet, I've seen, I drove by churches where they've had bounce houses, and, all, and I've seen they've had to park on the road, they've had to park on the grass, they had to park everywhere and anywhere to go for a bounce house with Jesus. But when it comes to the word of God, they don't want to hear it. These guys are preaching the word of God, and they got the whole city. Not town, city. City has more people than a village or a town. Now you're going to see great revival today. Really? I saw more names of other names than I ever saw of Jesus Christ being lifted up today. But when the Jews saw that the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Now what's that say about what Pilate said? The crowds that Jesus were getting was envying the chief priests and the religious leaders. How is he getting them all? And spank against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming what Paul was saying. So there was persecution in 45 AD. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. It said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, Jews. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of every lasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. You see that gauge now? It just went more three quarters now. It's more to the Gentiles for Paul. Jews still can get saved. It's not 100% Gentiles. But we've gone away from the, from the Jewish part. It was all Jewish. And then it moved, hey, we got a couple Gentiles in. Then we went right to, right to a Gentile house and Jews. Now Paul saying, hey, we're going to go to the Gentiles. Not forsaking the Jews. You see, now we're going anti-kosher. We're leaving the, 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 the law of Moses. Paul's already said, it's not the law of Moses anymore. You're going to be able to sit down at a lobster dinner, bow your head, say, God, thank you for the thing. Thank you for the salvation of the cross and the, and the empty tomb and the resurrected Jesus Christ. In, in Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Pass the butter in the, in the nutcracker, please. You see, I told you, Acts changes. Now, I would not take this doctrine right here and go right, right off into a Jewish synagogue. You would have to be well-versed in the Old Testament. And you would have to go through the Old Testament and work with a Jew with time and effort and energy and prayer to bring that Old Testament to show him Jesus Christ. That would be a lot of work. But you're not going to go into a into a Sabbath. Uh, no, you're not going to be able to go into a, a synagogue today because they don't even believe the Old Testament. They don't want the Messiah. They don't want the temple. They don't want nothing to do with God. They just meet together like like your Catholic, your, your Pentecostal, and your and your Lutherans and all that. They just do just to show a big show for God. They don't believe nothing. They don't realize that their law says you're supposed to go to Jerusalem three times a year. They don't do it. They're supposed to bring it to the temple. There's no temple to put. So they can't follow the Old Testament law. For so has the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou should be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, not Paul. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Oh, I'm ordained. So is anybody who believes on the word of God. They're ordained according to what Paul just said. Look at that. And the word of the Lord was, was published 
throughout all the region. Maybe start getting written. Maybe it's written down. People are saying, hey, did you hear what Paul said in, in synagogue this morning? No, what did he say? He said, out with us and with those dead dogs. And we leave that law for Jesus. I wouldn't believe you say something like that. Not in synagogue. Oh, if you would have been there, you would have heard it. So now the Gentiles are publishing the word of God. Acts, what do we do? All Jewish people are going out, they're publishing the word. We're in Acts chapter 13, and now the Gentiles are now publishing the word. And they're called Christians. They're called disciples of, of the Lord. The disciples of the Lord, Paul says in, in Romans, there's no difference between Jew or Greek. They're going out with the word. Notice, they're getting the word. They're believing the word. Now they're taking the word out. That's salvation. And that's what we that's what we can judge people on. If you don't take the word out, I, I gotta doubt your salvation. Everywhere in the Bible, they get saved, they go publish it more and more. They go tell others. But uh oh. Wherever there is a greatness of God, there's Satan there. But the Jews stirred up devout and honorable women. And the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barabbas, Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast just like they did with Jesus. Now Paul was causing a persecution too, remember. He's reaping what he, what he put out for seed. But you're seeing the Jews are treating Jesus as they're treating Paul, as they're treating Peter, they won't have nothing to do with it. But they're still God's people. And yet they reject Jesus Christ. They'll go to hell just as quick as a Gentile. And if they believe on Jesus Christ, they'll go to glory, absent from the body, present with the Lord, just as much as a Gentile. But the persecution's there. So when you go out and get saved and people go out and tell people about Jesus Christ, read we known the fact is that Satan will be there. And that's the parable of the sower. When a guy went out and sowed seed, the first thing, there's Satan. Now watch this. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Icodium. Where did Paul get that from? That's what Jesus told the disciples when he sent them out. They don't receive you. Shake off the dust of your feet. Be tolerable more in Sodom and Gomorrah. And this is not getting angry at the city. Hey, you guys want to have anything with Jesus? Well, I'm taking that dust off my shoes. How's that for separation and division from those who don't want to put? I'm going to take the dust off your city and remove it off my shoes. I don't even want to have anything on my bottom of my stinky, smelly feet that you don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. There we go. How do you want joy? How do you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Get out there and tell people about Jesus and the Word. That's it.